fucking love it so much. <laughs> Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I want to reread. Recently I've been wanting to reread some of my old favorite books so I thought that I could make it into a video and see what I make of it. I want to reread these books. All of them are for different reasons. I have five that I'm planning on rereading as soon as possible so I'm gonna share with you what those are. First, we have Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins. I have to reread this anyway for the Hunger Games live show read along that I'm doing with Lily, Peyton, and Emma. All of their channels will be linked down below, as well as this live show. I'm pretty sure that the live show is probably already going to be up by the time that I finish this. This is the third and final book in the Hunger Games trilogy, and I'm in the minority of the world, and this is my favorite book from the entire series. <laughs> I'm excited to see if I still think it's my favorite book in the entire series. I obviously have read books one and two in the past two months for the read-along, so I'm excited to see if this still holds up as my favorite book in the Hunger Games trilogy. I have the audiobook for this off of Audible, so that's how I plan to read this book. Next, I have a book where I want to see if it is still one of my favorites of all time. I haven't done it in the past couple years, but when I first read this book in middle school, I would read it at least once a year for like five years, and I don't think I've reread it in the past like three since I've been in college and that is The Host by Stephanie Meyer. Chanel from Chanel Times recently talked about this book in some of her videos and how this is one of her favorite books ever and like girl this is one of my favorite books ever and it's a chunky monkey of a book but I'm ready for it. This is a book by Stephanie Meyer that most people don't know about. I'm obviously a twi hard. I love Twilight. I believe in middle school I had a substitute teacher in one of my math classes and I think I was reading Twilight for like the 50th time in her class before class started and she asked me if I've read The Host yet and I was like no what is that and she's like it's Stephanie Meyer's other book and I was like what <laughs> so I picked it up and fell in love with it I love the book so much it is way better than the movie people love the movie the book is way better than the movie y'all I'm mainly in it for Wanda Wanda is one of my favorite characters of all time her and Melanie her and her relationship with Ian in this book is <laughs> so swoon worthy. It's one of my favorite things ever. Basically, if you didn't know about The Host, it is an alien dystopian book where aliens have invaded Earth, but they're kind of like little beings that are like this big and they take over Earth by putting themselves in human bodies and take over that body. And after a while, the human in the body dies and the alien takes over. So this is about one alien that gets put into this girl's body named Melanie. Basically, it's Melanie fighting inside of her brain with Wanda, Wanderer, the alien. And Melanie had a life before she was taken and an alien was put inside of her body. It's like Wanda's trying to fight the way that Melanie feels for her boyfriend and her brother. It's so good. I haven't read it in years, so I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this. I think I got this through Libby off my library and I've never listened to the audiobook, so I'm so excited for this. Next, we have one that I don't know what I'm gonna think about it. I wanted to read it to see if my reading tastes have changed. I believe they have since I read this book and that is The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. This is one of my favorite trilogies of all time in middle school. I loved this series. It's about a main character girl named Belly and every summer she goes to Cousins Beach, the place that she like lives in over the summer with her mom and her mom's best friend and her two sons and it's kind of like a love triangle thing with her and the two sons even though she like she's in love with like this brother but then this brother loves her and like this brother just does, doesn't love her I don't really remember. I know that I hate love triangles, so I'm wondering why did I love this book? This book has five stars from me on Goodreads, and I used to reread this book all the time. I, I, I don't remember why I loved this book. <laughs> so I want to reread it and see what I think about it now, and if I can still say it's one of my old favorites, because I honestly have no idea. This is actually the only series that I've read by Jenny Han. I haven't read her other series, so uh, We'll see what I think of this book. I got this audiobook off of Audible Escape, so it's on Audible Escape. Then we have one that I've recently been wanting to reread. If you've seen one of my reading vlogs, I talked about how I wanted to reread The Edge of Never by J. A. Radmirsky to see if it's still one of my favorite romance books of all time. Because I recently tried to pick up The Moment of Letting Go by J. A. Radmirsky and DNF'd it after 60 pages because 
I was bored, was not having it, was very predictable of a story. So I was wondering if I actually liked J.A. Renmierski's writing now. Like, have my reading tastes changed since I've read this book? I think this was one of the first solely romance books that I ever read in like my junior or senior year of high school. I don't physically have the book on me at the moment because it's at my apartment in College Station and I'm in Houston at the moment because of isolation. So I do not have it physically on me so I cannot physically read it. I found this one off of Audible Escape. One of the things I loved about this book was the audiobook. We'll see how I think about it. I remember, I remember loving it, <laughs> but I just read a J.A. Renmierski book and didn't like it. So we'll see how I feel about this one. This one is about or my character named Cameron. She like leaves her home to like go on an adventure basically. And on the Greyhound bus that she's in, she meets a guy. I can't remember his name at the moment, but she meets a guy and they end up traveling together. It's kind of like one of those things where I don't want a relationship, but I really like you kind of thing. I think I don't really remember. All I remember is that I really liked this book. So we'll see what I think about it now. And then the last book that I would love to reread that I'm so excited to reread is Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wool. The reason why I want to reread this is so that I can honestly solidify the fact that this is my favorite young adult fantasy book and to prepare me to read the sequel which I still haven't read yet and it was released months ago. <laughs> I have a whole review for this book actually. I will link it down below if you want to know my thoughts about it. Originally the, that video was made like an hour after I read the book for the first time. This is a fantasy book about a main character named Zira and she is a heartless and heartless people are people whose hearts are taken out of their chest and put in a jar by a witch and the witch is basically their owner and can control them with their heart and they can't like go 10 miles away without their heart and their heart is normally guarded in their house and safekeeping by the witch. In this land the witches are at war with humans. The witch community though has a very big task for Zira to complete. They want her to pretend to be a human and to go to the human land and pretend to be a suitor for the prince. Get close to the prince and turn him into a heartless so that they can control the prince and essentially control the king and win the war that they are in. It's so interesting. I love it a lot. I'm gonna reread it to see if I can honestly say out of all the young adult fantasy books that I've read, this is my favorite. And hopefully by the end of this video, I can go and pick up the next book in this series because this book ends on a cliffhanger. So these are the five books plus The Edge of Never that I want to reread and hopefully I will like all of these books still. I honestly don't know. So I'll let you know what I think about these books as I am reading them. Hey y'all, I'm about maybe a third of the way through Mocking Jay now. I am listening to this on audio uh, through the um, Audible app. I got it off of Audible because the narrator in this book is amazing. She's wonderful. I love her a lot. I feel like she just represents Katniss's character so much in her narration. There was so much that I forgot about this book. I'm trying to keep this as spoiler free as possible. I think I might have like a little bit of a spoiler section towards the end of every uh, book clip. So once I finish the book, I might do a little spoiler section, but I'm not finished yet. So I'm not going to talk about spoilers right now. But I just want to say, Gail, oh, Gail, Gail, oh my gosh, Gail is Telling me there's a reason why everyone's team PETA. It's because the way you treat Katniss Gale really sucks. <laughs> he just is annoying the crap out of me. Of course I'm loving this. It's amazing. Only a third of the way through and um, emotions are coming out because there are things that I forgot that happened in this book. <laughs> There's things that I forgot that are bringing out emotions in me because some of it is not represented in the movies. And I rewatch those movies all the time, but I haven't reread the actual book in a very long time. Just like Finnick and his whole story at the beginning, I completely forgot about. Also like seeing PETA, like the TV parts of him on television, like kills me. Oh, it kills me like the movies I think represent those scenes so well <laughs> Anyway, okay, I'm trying to keep this as fully free as possible. So I'm gonna stop But I'm really enjoying it. I finished mocking Jay <laughs> again five out of five stars And I still think that this is my favorite book in the Hunger Games trilogy People don't love this book as much as the other ones in the series and I totally understand why this book was just very different than the two and how this obviously doesn't have a Hunger Games in it, which just like 
had me thinking of how else is this book supposed to go? You know what I mean? Like, I don't think there needed to be another Hunger Games to end the series. Like, I, I was like thinking about it. How else would the series have ended? Like, how else would you have wanted this book to go? Like, I feel like this book was totally valid in what it does and what happens in it. I love the characters so much, except for a couple who I hate. <laughs> Loved my experience re-listening to this and I can't wait to watch the movies again and then talk to Emma and Lily and Peyton about it in a couple of days. But again, this is still one of my favorite books of all time. This is my favorite book in the Hunger Games trilogy. There you go. I think I'm gonna have a little bit of a spoiler section right now so if you have not read Mockingjay. I recommend skipping to the next portion or a book in the video. <laughs> this book had me crying towards the end obviously because of the many things that happened. Like it doesn't really portray itself in the movie as much but like in the book you see just how worn down Katniss is. Her death made her not want to exist anymore. And then the end when Peeta and her finally get together and the epilogue, the epilogue, the epilogue, the epilogue, the epilogue is my life. The epilogue is one of my favorite things in the entire world. I mostly stand this book because of the epilogue. It is one of the best written things that I've ever read in my entire life. I just, I want a whole book about the epilogue. Like if Suzanne Collins just wrote a book centered around the epilogue of this book, I would read it like all the time. I would read it over and over and over again. That's what I was kind of hoping for and thinking about when we heard there's a new Hunger Games book coming out. I was praying that it was like a book set after this which it's not, but that's okay. I'll take what I can get. Hopefully I love Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes as much as this book. Again, I love Peta. Peta is the love of my life and his character growth in here is heart breaking. Like his growth and his down, his downfall and then his growth is just like, oh, it's heart breaking, heart wrenching. I can't stand Gale. I don't understand how anyone could be team Gale. He always thought about himself. He's putting President Coin above Katniss. If you love her, you wouldn't think that way. Also, President Coin, worst person ever. I will leave you with this. I've realized the next cat that I get in my life will be named Buttercup. I don't know why I've never thought of this before. The next cat that I get, her name will be Buttercup. His name will be Buttercup. Whoever the cat is, whatever gender the cat is, it will be Buttercup. I don't know why I haven't done this before. I have a dog named Katniss. Why didn't I name a cat Buttercup? Loved this reread, of course. Five out of five stars. I love it a lot. Can't wait for the prequel to come out. This definitely is saying one of my favorite books of all time. Hey y'all, so I have started The Edge of Never by J.A. Rudmierski. I'm around two and a half hours maybe into the audiobook. Um, this is on Audible Escape if you want to check it out. And I totally forgot the reason as to why Cameron wanted to leave town or what sparked her to leave her town and to basically go nowhere. She just gets on a Greyhound bus and just wants to leave and just like go anywhere but where she lives. And that's because she has such like a toxic friendship that I completely forgot about. She has this friend that she's had since like middle school and she tells her, she's 20 years old now, and so she tells her best friend, hey, your boyfriend came on to me and her best friend curses her out and yells at her and tells her, I never wanna see you again because you were lying to me, which is like kind of just like baffling to me that your best friend since seventh grade would think that of you, that you were lying about that. I just really grinded my gears as to that some girls think like that and put their boyfriends over their best friends sometimes. I am really enjoying it so far. We got introduced to our male main character, Andrew Parrish. The audiobook, so it's in first person from both point of views, from the from Cam and from Andrew. I wish there was a male narrator for Andrew so badly, but the woman narrator for this, I think does a really good job anyway, but I think it would have made the story even more enjoyable if there was a male narrator for him, but she's doing great anyway. He is on this bus because his father is dying, which I completely forgot about as well. His father is dying, he's gonna go visit him um, before he passes. Um, and he's having just a hard time in general at the moment. At the moment, they're on this bus together and kind of being introduced to one another. I'm actually 
kind of really liking it. Like it's way different and way better than the other J.A. Ranmierski book that I read and did not finish a couple weeks ago. Kind of glad that I'm really enjoying it still because um, I was afraid that I wasn't going to. I know some things that happen in this book still. I remember some things but a lot of this stuff I completely forgot about so I'm very interested to see how I will feel later on in the book when I get deeper into it. Okay I finished The Edge of Never by J.A. Ranmierski. I don't think this is a favorite of all time anymore in all honesty i think it was good i didn't think it was a bad book i think i maybe might change my rating to a four star there was just some things i wasn't really okay with and the things that i'm not okay with are huge like spoilers that are all revealed at the end that i didn't really agree with i think the main reason why i loved this book so much when i first read it is because it was one of my first books that I ever read that was solely a romance book so I didn't know better know better <laughs> I had like nothing to compare it to when it came to honesty and communication and just other things that appear in romance books that are like beautiful like works of art this book isn't as amazing as I remember it to be the ending is probably what made it seem like it was one of the best books I ever read of all time which looking back I kind of felt like the author was kind of like manipulating a little bit because like she makes you have like a sucker punch ending to hopefully get you to get to five stars I don't know that was my feeling of it uh towards the end I don't think this is a favorite romance of all time anymore but like I enjoyed what I read and I forgot a lot of stuff that happened in it and I did enjoy my time reading it. I don't think it's a favorite of all time anymore. There were parts that I was kind of cringing at. Oh and also I totally forgot that this book has the word babe in it. Like babe is a nickname. I can't stand babe. Like I cannot stand when someone calls someone babe in an audiobook or a book. Like I don't know why that term of endearment is not for me. <laughs> at all so I was cringing a lot through this book because I don't know why that word just isn't for me <laughs> but anyway I'm gonna talk about spoilers now so if you don't want to be spoiled for this book you can go ahead and jump to the next book in this video the ending of this book kind of came out of nowhere I want to say because Andrew like all of a sudden one day like faints and has a seizure in his kitchen and Cameron calls the police and he goes to the hospital but the thing is he's had this tumor for so long and there have been no like indicators or side effects that have shown itself throughout the entire book if there would have been like little things like oh he looked a little fatigued here or he looked unhealthy here or like little hints here and there like it would have come across better but it just felt like it it, it came out of nowhere. You were not acting like someone who has an inoperable tumor and might die any day. Like he was not acting like that at all and his body didn't show that and I would assume that your body shows that. I was also just like a little bit bored here and there if that makes sense. Oh good evening Ollie. <laughs> He's making himself comfortable. Don't mind him. There's also just like some demeaning terms towards women like shh talked about often and it wasn't really addressed how that's not really okay like Cameron was doing it to other women and talking bad about other women at times and it just it got on my nerves a little bit it felt like whenever she saw a girl her age she would call them a bad word I'm like why why do you have to why do you have to do that <laughs> like why can't we all love each other <laughs> anyway I digress this book has its flaws I can see that but it's also like a huge nostalgic book for me it's one of the first full romance books that i ever read so uh, i am bumping it down to a four out of five stars hi there we're gonna stop the video for a second and i'm going to shout someone out from my shout out mug i try to shout out at least one person in every video that i do most of the time sometimes I forget I'm very sorry this is a mug full of all of the youtubers booktubers that I'm subscribed to um, no matter if they're big or small so I'm gonna shout someone out from my mug today this one today's is Ben Alderson. Ben Alderson has no idea who I am but I love him a lot. <laughs> I don't remember 
remember why, but Ben hasn't been making videos recently for the past couple of years, I believe, which um, is totally fine. Let him do him. But um, I used to be like obsessed with Ben. Whenever he would release a video, I would immediately go click on it because he would read a bunch of young adult books that I ended up loving as well. He has been writing his own books though. I watched his videos, his journey of him writing his own book, and I still have to read it, Cloaked in Shadows. I've been wanting to read it for so long. He's also written a bunch of other fantasy books. They're, they're really cool because they're like gay fantasy elves and like I want to read that so badly. I've been wanting to just read Ben's books for so long and I love Ben a lot so please go check out Ben. I don't know if he's still making videos but if you want to be subscribed to him and be ready for when he does post a video go check him out. <laughs> Hello okay um I have thoughts on this. I'm around an hour over the way into the audiobook. I don't know where that is physically in the book at all. Our main character Belly I think is like 15 or 16 in here and she's like crushing on this like family friend she's been like friends with ever since she can remember because her mom and their mom are best friends and they only see each other during summer vacation. I think there's a reason why no one reads this book really nowadays which is sad um because I think it's kind of like the writing style is really prominent to the time it was written in. It's very simplistic, it's very to the point, and it's kind of cheesy in the way that she talks and the way her inner dialogue is, even for a high schooler. I believe Jenny Han wrote these books before the To All the Boys I Loved Before. I'm not 100% sure. This was written in 2009. <laughs> that does not surprise me at all. The audiobook, the narrator, <laughs> sounds like a 12 year old like she sounds like a 12 year old like she's trying to be a 12 year old but she's 16 I believe in this book the whole premise of the beginning of the book is that when she sees her crush over the summer for the first time everyone's like oh my gosh how did you become so pretty and like I think that's starting to become an issue for me because like I kind of find it offensive like oh wow wait you're pretty like um, I don't know, maybe this will probably appeal to a uh, younger audience more because they're probably not thinking along the same way that I am thinking. Those are my thoughts on this book so far at least. We're now over halfway and I had to stop and update because uh, the R word is used. What even? That's like the word if I hear someone say it, I get like furious. <sighs> I've worked with special needs kids and like that word just really grinds my gears and I can't believe it's in this book. Maybe that was just like the time period and kids said that a lot because like one of the kids just says it. He's like, oh, that's our word. No, thank you. No, thank you. This book is like not what I remember it being. Turns out like the romance in here isn't even between one of the brothers. It's between a random guy she meets on the beach who just so happens to be someone she knew from middle school from a like a Latin camp they took like years ago. I have no idea. The like only thing that I'm really loving about this book, Belly's mom and her mom's friends, like the boy's mom, like they're best friends and I really love their relationship. Her name's Susanna. She's like a second mom to Belly and Belly feels like she could tell her anything and which is a different relationship than she has with her mom. But I just love Susanna's character and I love their bond. Man, Belly is freaking annoying. I guess I just didn't remember this book to be this annoying. She's annoying like she's not like a 12 year old girl and she's 15 and then the r word oh the r word was just used oh my word i went on my walk today and i ended up finishing the audiobook for the summer i turned pretty by jenny han i think i said at the beginning of this video like i don't know why i loved this book just that i did i remember why i loved this book so much belly has been in love with her family friend conrad for as long as she can remember she's always had a huge crush on him and they vacation together every single year their families do every single year and she sees that family every year at the beach house that they live in together i had a very similar experience as a kid i had a huge 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 crush on a boy i would go on vacation with every single year i think that the reason why i loved this book so much is because i wanted to be belly so badly <laughs> I wanted the experience that she had and I wanted the end result of this book. I wanted it. I wanted it in my own real life. So that's why I loved this book so much. I am just now remembering that. I can draw a lot of parallels to myself and Belly's experience when I was a kid. So uh, I now know why I loved this book so much. Nowadays, I don't know what to think of this book in all honesty. I felt a lot of nostalgia. I was getting a little bit touched by how much I remember about this book and how much this book like 
brought along so many memories in my own life. I can really remember myself reading this for the first time and falling in love because I was so connected to this character. Now when I read it as a 21 year old woman, when I am far past that little crush, I realize how this book is very much written for the younger age audience. The writing style is very simplistic. Belly acts very 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 young and somewhat immature for her age. The way that she talks and um, the way that she thinks is very much like a 12 year old girl <laughs> even though she's 15. She got on my nerves a lot because of the way that she talked and she kept calling other people selfish specifically Conrad throughout a bunch of this book and yes Conrad is going through a lot of stuff and he is acting selfish but Belly is also. There's also like a random guy coming in here that she meets over the summer and she starts a little bit of a crush thing going on with and she is like kind of like a jerk to him and kind of stringing him along. That wasn't really addressed at the end of the book. I feel like it should have been. I don't think that I'm going to rate this book at all just because I know that it has its flaws. Obviously, I came across them, especially with the R word being brought up and written in this book. There were a few things that I wasn't really okay with and that really got on my nerves, but this book just holds so much nostalgia for me and I got really emotional reading this because I can really picture 12 year old me reading this book and falling in love with it and falling in love with Belly and her story and her love for Conrad. So I'm not gonna rate it because I don't think it's for my age group at all. <laughs> I do not picture anyone over the age of 18 really reading this book and getting something from it. I am interested in, however, to continue on with the series to reread them because I know that each book she grows up and I believe the last book either ends with her being 19 or 18. So I'm very interested to see how that goes. I know the end result of the last book. I know what happens. I don't remember what happens in the second or third book before the very end, but I know the very end of this book and I know college is talked about in here and she goes on college visits. Conrad at the end of this book is in college. I really do want to continue on with the series though and see if my feelings have changed with the rest of the books and if the rest of the books are as juvenile as this one. I don't think this is for my age range at all nowadays but I can really appreciate this book for how it made me feel when I was younger. Okay so I am this far of the way into the host on page 358 and oh my gosh I love this book so much. Okay, I haven't updated since now because it's only been two days and I've read this much because I've been obsessed with this audiobook. Like, all I've been doing in my free time is listening to this book because I love it so much. Wanda is one of, like, the most interesting characters I've ever, 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 ever read from. I love her so much and I can't wait for the rest of this book because it just gets even better and better and better. I also forgot to say at the beginning of this book because I completely forgot and it's like not represented in the movie but there's an age gap romance in here. So as I said before Wanda takes over the body of Melanie but Melanie is still alive and kicking in her brain trying to fight back. But Melanie and Wanda like form a friendship and a bond through all of this. Melanie's past love was Jared before she was taken by the aliens and Wanda was put inside her. She had Jared as the love of her life. Jared is 30 when Melanie is 20. So there's an age gap romance there if y'all are interested in that. Like if y'all aren't interested in age gap romances, you wouldn't think that it is because Melanie is very mature for her age in a sense and Jared doesn't seem like he's 30 years old. Also y'all it's the end of the world and there's only like less than 100 people maybe still alive that's not an alien. So uh take that for what you will when it's the end of the world. 10 years does not seem that bad. But I love her relationship with Jamie who is Melanie's brother. <laughs> They're so sweet and like Wanda is like developing like a motherly bond towards Jamie and it's it's so so cute. And then her and Ian. <laughs> I love her and Ian so much. <laughs> I'm also loving the um, like development with the relationship with Ian. Okay, so Ian is a guy in this base that they go to that's full of humans. The reason why they 
go in search of these people is because Melanie convinces Wanda to go find Jared, who was Melanie's lover, and Jamie, Melanie's brother. And so through all of the memories that Melanie is showing her, Wanda starts to fall in love with Jared herself. There might be another man in the picture for Wanda. <laughs> His name is Ye. <laughs> I love it so much. I can't stop gushing. I love this book so much. I'm going to continue on reading. It's later in the day. <laughs> I finished it. The end always makes me uh, super emotional. I love this character a lot. I love Wanda a lot. This was a great reread, obviously. I love this book very, very much. If you have not read this book yet, what are you doing with your life? I feel like it can cater to any group of people. There's that little sprinkle of romance in here there's the sci-fi element but there's not too much sci-fi it's also like post-apocalyptic fascinating and amazing and i love this book so much i would love 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 for more people to read it because it is so good it's so good it's so good wanda's one of my favorite characters of all time so um i'm so happy that i got to reread this book and um read about her all over again <laughs> So I guess I'm going to be getting into some spoiler thoughts just because I want to talk about this book for a second. If you have not read this book, I recommend going to the next and last book that is in this video. My favorite thing about this book other than Wanda is her relationship with Ian. <laughs> freaking love it so much it's like one of the favorite romances i've ever read in my entire life and there's not even like that much about it there are maybe like two kissing scenes it's just like the longing and the conflicting feelings and the compassion and the love and the friendship between the two of them is like everything i could ever ask for when reading about a couple and i know i'm being emotional okay I don't care what you think. <laughs> I love this couple so much and I love Ian so much how he realized how wrong he was and how his feelings towards aliens and towards Wanda had like changed throughout the book and like how he started to fall in love with her and like loved her. He didn't love Melanie, he didn't love Melanie's body, he loved Wanda for who she was. <laughs> My favorite line in the entire book and I would write this quote on everything that I owned when I was in middle school. At the end, when she wakes up in her new body and Ian goes and says, I held you in my hand, Wanderer, and you were so beautiful. Like, <laughs> I wrote that quote on everything that I owned. I loved it so much. I loved Ian's compassion so much. Like, just like him and Wanderer were everything to me. They are everything to me. I also really loved Melanie. <laughs> and how she grew to love Wanderer as well and Wanderer grew to love Melanie and like their bond will be like forever in place. Like nothing can change that bond between them and it's like so amazing. <laughs> I know I'm being emotional but this book makes me emotional because I love it so much and Wanda was willing to like risk everything to make the people that she loves happy and she didn't want to hurt another person ever and she didn't want to live without these people so she wanted to die instead. <laughs> It's like, oh my god. Anyways, um, enough of me crying about this book. This is normal though. Every time I read this book, I end up sobbing. So, um, this is nothing new for me. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> okay, I'm around 50% of the way through Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wolf. I took the dust jacket off. I've already started tapping because I didn't tab the first time I read it because I didn't know that it was going to be a favorite book of mine. I will say I believe the audiobook for this is on Audible Scape maybe or it's on Audible. I do not recommend it. I listened to maybe like 30 seconds of it and her voice is not really something I want to listen to <laughs> which sounds really bad but like I am very picky with my narrators. Just listening 30 seconds in I'm not comfortable and interested in the narrator. I will not be interested in the story and the narration will negatively affect the way I think about the book. I decided not to do that because I did not want to think about that book that way. I am around 50% of the way through and I am really enjoying this. It's way funnier than I remembered it being. Zira is a very, very, very witty, 
funny narrator character. Turns out in this land that they live in, the higher the status you are, the longer your hair is. So if you're like homeless or basically peasant by what they're saying, your hair is very short and sheer and it can't be long. And so the prince has this long braid that goes all the way down his back. I just found that so interesting and I completely forgot about that. I'm really enjoying this. I really am enjoying the characters. The story overall is amazing and it's so unique. I've never read anything like this before. When you become heartless, this hunger is put inside of you. Hunger in this book is a character in and of itself. She constantly has this negative voice talking to her all the time, her hunger talking to her all the time, wanting to kill everyone. <laughs> so I found that so interesting and unique to be a part of this story. So I'm very excited to hopefully finish this very 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 soon okay i know i just updated you i maybe read maybe like 10 more pages but i honestly forgot that there is a character with a disability in this book that i completely forgot about and i have no idea why i remember her now and she's amazing <laughs> so this woman named fion correct me if i'm wrong on the terminology but i believe she has a club foot i think that's what it's called she has a cane that she walks with all the time and people at court make fun of her and sneer at her and she doesn't have any friends because of it i'm, I'm very excited to relive this friendship that fion and zira will have in this book it is what like two o'clock in the morning now but i finally finished it. <laughs> I love this book very, very, very much. I honestly don't know if it's my favorite young adult fantasy book, but it is like high up there. It's just hard for me to like say something is my favorite of all time. You know what I mean? I would consider it one of my favorites. It's so unique and different and that's why I love it. But it also has those classic young adult tropes that you can't help but love. Going to the palace to vie for the prince's heart and the prince being a little standoffish and brooding, but in all honesty he's like just like a cinnamon roll of a hero the ending always got to me because it ends on a huge 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 cliffhanger and i didn't continue on with the series when the next book came out because i wanted to reread this and i finally got around to it so i'm going to be reading the second book as soon as possible please read this if you haven't because it's amazing i love it zira is an amazing female character like an amazing just character in general i don't think i'm gonna be talking about spoilers for this book specifically because i have a whole entire review of this book on my youtube channel i have linked it down below so if you want to know my in-depth in-depth thoughts about this that video is the way to go so there you have it that is the end of this rereading experience for me i really loved doing this video I, I love just rereading old favorite books like it just it like melted my heart and i was so excited to just talk about all of these books i remember just falling in love with all of these books when i read them and i'm very happy that i decided to go through with this idea because i ended up loving it and loving the experience that i had so yeah anyways thank y'all so so much for watching um please let me know down below if you would like to see me do another version of this but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye